hello students good morning all how are you okay all are doing fine right so students we have completed successfully uh, two colligative properties first one lowering of vapor pressure and second one elevation in boiling point okay so and also we have uh, done few uh, numericals also students last week so this week we are uh, going to start the third colligative property what is its name it's called as depression in freezing point okay so let's learn what depression in freezing point is students okay so kindly put the side heading roman letter 3 depression in freezing point okay depression in freezing point okay so something which is coming down depression in freezing point so as we have uh, uh, learned the first coll uh, two colligative properties in the similar way we will be learning this colligative property also students so first we will learn what freezing point is okay so what do you know about freezing point we have learned what vapor pressure is we have learned what boiling point is now we will learn students what freezing point is okay so we all know that so even if i ask you you will answer me it is the temperature at which a liquid converts into its solid right <coughs> this is the answer you will give me right it is the temperature at which a liquid starts converting into its solid yes this is the uh, definition for freezing point but one more important point to be noticed or to be understood students at this temperature at this temperature the liquid and solid forms are in equilibrium what is that students at this temperature where liquid is converting into its solid they that means at that point the liquid and solid forms of the substance are in equilibrium and also the vapor pressures of liquid and solid are same okay so this is the important point students but more two points you should learn at freezing point the liquid and the solid forms are in equilibrium or or they exist in equilibrium okay and also it was observed that the vapor pressure of the liquid form and the vapor pressure of its solid form both are same okay students understood now this point okay now we will put all these points in a single definition so write down the definition students kindly write down the definition here the temperature the temperature at which the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the temperature at which vapor pressure of a liquid vapor pressure of a liquid is equal to is equal to vapor pressure of its solid so kindly try to understand this students the temperature at which vapor pressure of a liquid is equal to vapor pressure of its solid it's a solid not somebody else solid okay not any other substance it's on solid okay is called as is called as freezing point is called as freezing point got it students 
the temperature at which vapor pressure of a liquid is equal to vapor pressure of its solid is called as freezing point below that sentence write down one more sentence students at this at this temperature at this temperature liquid and solid forms at this temperature comma liquid and solid forms f o r m s r a r e r in equilibrium r in equilibrium full stop okay so you know the meaning right they are in equilibrium means they coexist with one another fine students right so you got one mark for freezing point definition now so main uh, thing is here we will take now let us compare a pure solvent and a solution okay so this is what we are doing since beginning since the first colligative property okay so we will take a pure solvent for example water and a solution consisting or containing a non volatile solute okay now we will compare the freezing points of solvent and freezing point of a solution okay so just uh, uh, reminding you about vapor pressure students we all know that vapor pressure of a pure solvent is greater than vapor pressure of a solution okay so immediately when we are adding a non volatile solute to a pure solvent its vapor pressure is being decreased okay so first colligative property we have learned that vapor pressure of a pure solvent is greater than vapor pressure of a dilute solution okay so here also the same principle students freezing point of solvent greater than freezing point of solution why in order to understand this concept i will give you an example students okay so we all know that suppose we put uh, water drinking water in a deep freezer okay so it starts converting into ice okay what is the temperature students do you know at which water starts converting into ice it's a solid form pure water it is 0 degrees centigrade very good freezing point of water is 0 degrees centigrade okay suppose uh, we take a solution for example you mix sugar in water or salt in water and put it in the deep freezer same time you put these two uh, liquids what is that pure water and salt or sugar solution whatever it is as you wish it's of your choice okay so now after some time when the temperature reaches 0 degree centigrade water starts converting into ice okay but the salt or sugar solution it doesn't convert into its solid at 0 degree centigrade students okay so we can see water is already convert, start, uh, started converting into ice but this sugar or salt solution it will not convert into its solid at 0 degree centigrade then where it will convert into its solid you need to cool it cool it cool it that means we have to decrease the temperature below 0 degree centigrade students understood my point okay so a simple example ma water starts converting into ice at 0 degree centigrade but salt or sugar solution it will not convert into into its solid at 0 degree centigrade then when does it convert we need to cool and cool and cool or we should decrease the temperature below 0 degrees centigrade below 0 means what students it is 
negative value. Okay. So suppose uh, if the salt solution converts into its solid at minus 4 degree centigrade. For example, I am just assuming that. Okay. So which one is greater students? 0 degrees is greater or minus 4 is greater? You all know that 0 is greater. Okay. A negative value is, is uh, less than 0. Okay. We all uh, know this. This is the universal truth. Okay, so now solution starts freezing. That means solution starts converting into its solid at a lower temperature. At a lower temperature where it starts freezing. Try to understand my point students. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. So when we uh, consider a pure solvent. And a solution, the vapor pressure of solution becomes equal to vapor pressure of its solid. Whatever it is, salt solution or sugar solution. Okay, so when you cool it, when you put it in the deep freezer, it obviously converts into its solid state. That means it freezes, right? Okay. So, that means, freezing point means what? We have seen that vapor pressure of liquid and vapor pressure of solid, both are same. Okay, students, right? So, now, when we take solution, vapor pressure of solution will be equal to vapor pressure of its solid at a lower temperature, at a lower temperature, where it starts freezing. Okay? So, now tell me, freezing point of solvent is greater or freezing point of solution is greater? Those who have understood, you might be shouting. That is, freezing point of solvent is greater than freezing point of a solution. Okay, students, right? Understood my point? So, write down, write down students below. Vapor pressure of, vapor pressure of, put down in the form of a sentence students. Vapor pressure of a solution will be equal to, will be equal to vapor pressure, vapor pressure of, of its solid, of its solid at, at a lower temperature, at a lower temperature where it starts freezing, where it starts freezing, full stop, okay. So, hope I made you clear students, okay. So, just uh, before your eyes, just imagine water and salt solution. Water freezes at 0 degree centigrade. We all know that, right? But the solution, it doesn't freeze at 0 degree centigrade. We need to lower the temperature more and more, more and more. Then only it starts freezing. Okay, so therefore freezing point of solvent is greater than freezing point of a solution. Clear students? Very good. Now, freezing point of solvent, I denote it with the T naught. Freezing point of solution, I denote it with the TS. Okay, so now you all understood T naught greater than TS. Okay, students, this is freezing point of solvent. This is freezing point of a solution. Okay, so now after this, we are supposed to define what depression in freezing point is. You understood the meaning of the side heading, students? We did not write or this colligative property is not named as Elevation in freezing point or rise in freezing point. It is written as, it is given the name as depression in freezing point. Why students? When a non-volatile solute is added to a pure solvent, its freezing point is coming down. It's being decreased. 
Okay. So now we will define what depression in freezing point is. Okay. Now put the side heading depression in freezing point. Okay. Make it fast. I will dictate. You write down. The difference between the difference between the difference between freezing point of freezing point of a pure solvent freezing point of a pure solvent and freezing point of a dilute solution freezing point of a dilute solution containing containing non volatile solute the difference between freezing point of a pure solvent and freezing point of a dilute solution containing a non volatile solute is called as is called as depression in freezing point very good is called as depression in freezing point full stop now we know that a lowering of vapor pressure is denoted by delta p okay elevation in boiling point is denoted by delta tb and now depression in freezing point is denoted as delta tf okay delta tf now how will you write the expression for delta tf so we will write it as t not minus ts put it in a box students the expression for delta tf is equal to t not minus ts okay now as we all know this is a colligative property and the purpose of a colligative property is to determine molecular weight of a non volatile solute okay you all uh, remember this point i guess students right it is used to determine molecular weight of a non volatile solute okay now we will learn how to uh, determine molecular weight of a solute from delta tf okay now let us put the side heading students below this kindly put the side heading students determination of determination of determination of molecular weight molecular weight of of non volatile solute determination of molecular weight of a non volatile solute from from delta tf from delta tf underline written students side heading determination of molecular weight of a non volatile solute from delta tf okay so uh, this is the diagrammatic representation in order to learn molecular weight from delta tf students so what you do uh, take a pencil scale and within one or two minutes you should complete the diagram students carefully draw the diagram because for the derivation this graphical representation is very 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 important on x axis its temperature on y axis it is vapor pressure that means graph is plotted between vapor pressure and temperature okay draw the curves carefully students so the first curve name it as solid next besides there are three curves solvent solution 1 and solution 2 okay mark the temperatures t2 t1 and t0 t2 t1 t0 
T0. Next, vapor pressure P0, P1, P2. And mark the alphabets students. A, B, C, D, E. A, B, C, D, E. So draw all the dotted lines carefully students. Which are the points to be joined? All those. Please carefully draw the diagram. Completed students? Shall we do the derivation now? Okay students, these are the vapor pressure curves students. What are they? The vapor pressure curves of what? Solid, solvent, solutions 1 and 2. Last week also I told you, what are the solutions 1 and 2? Solutions 1 and 2 means with the different concentrations. A slight change in the concentration. Okay. So why are we taking like that? In order to understand the depression in freezing point of a dilute solution. How it is uh, coming down. Okay. So here we have taken one extra curve that is vapor pressure curve of a solid. Why we have taken? Because freezing point is nothing but the temperature at which vapor pressure of a liquid is equal to vapor pressure of its solid. Okay. So here students look here. The temperatures T0, T1, T2. Vapor pressures P0, P1, P2. What you have to observe here carefully. Look here. This is the point. That means we named it as Point A. What is happening at point A? At point A, vapor pressure of solvent and vapor pressure of solid, they are becoming as 1. Okay? That means the temperature corresponding to this point. What is it? T0. T0 is the freezing point of a solvent. Okay? Write down in your books first. T0 is the freezing point temperature of solvent. Next students, this is point B. What is happening at point B? Vapor pressure curve of solution 1 and vapor pressure curve of its solid. They are becoming as 1. Okay, the temperature corresponding to point B is T1. So what is T1? What is T1? T1 is the freezing point temperature of solution 1. Okay. Please write down students. I am not writing here. T1 is the freezing point temperature of solution 1. Next. C. What is happening at point C? At point C, vapor pressure of solution 2 is becoming equal to vapor pressure of it's a solid student. Okay. So these are three different points corresponding to three different temperatures. Now temperature corresponding to point C is what students? T2. Okay. So now what is T2? T2 is the freezing point temperature of solution 2. Okay. Now you got to understand what are T0, T1 and T2. T0 is the freezing point temperature of a solvent at which vapor pressure of a solvent is equal to vapor pressure of its solid. Next, T1 is the temperature at which freezing point of solution, uh, vapor pressure of solution 1 is equal to vapor pressure of its solid. Next, T2 is the freezing point temperature. Freezing point temperature of what? Solution 2 where vapor pressure of solution 2 is becoming equal to vapor pressure of its solid. 
Okay. So did I quote all the sentences correct students? Fine. So T naught freezing point temperature of solvent. Again at which vapor pressure of solvent is equal to vapor pressure of its solid. T1 is the freezing point temperature of a solution 1 where vapor pressure of solution 1 is equal to vapor pressure of its solid. Next T2 is the freezing point temperature at which vapor pressure of solution 2 is equal to vapor pressure of its solid. Clear? Okay. Now, so we are uh, studying about dilute solutions. As we all know, uh, as these are dilute solutions, their vapor pressure curves are almost straight lines. Not completely straight lines, they are almost straight lines. Okay, and hence we can observe here two triangle students. What are they? A, C, D and the other one A, B, E. Okay, kindly write down students for dilute solutions. Will I write down? For dilute solutions, for dilute solutions, the curves, curves, U, C, U, R, V, E, S, R, A, R, E, R, almost straight lines, are almost straight lines and hence and hence triangles triangles a c d triangles a c d and a b e a b e are similar are similar full stop written na okay therefore below write down Below write down students. Now we will do the comparative study. So CD by BE is equal to CD by BE. So from these two triangles I am taking students. CD by BE is equal to AD by A. From these two triangles. Look here students. CD of ACD and BE of ABE, okay, is equal to AD by AE students, AD, AD divided by A, okay. So now, what is CD corresponding to? CD corresponding to two temperatures, T0 and T2, okay. So now tell me as we are moving from left to right, temperature is increasing. So 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. T naught is greater or T1 is greater? T naught is great. Okay. So the difference between these two temperatures. How will we write students? T naught CD corresponds to T naught minus T2 divided by BE. BE is corresponding to two temperatures. What are they? T1 and T0. Among these two also, T0 is greater. So, how will we show the difference? T0 minus T1. Okay. Now, is equal to, is equal to, AD is corresponding to the vapor pressures. This we all know, you are now masters in vapor, lowering of vapor pressure. P naught as we are moving from down to up, this one is greater. Okay. Suppose this is 80, uh, uh, 70, 80, 90. P naught greater or P naught P2 greater? P naught is greater. So AD corresponds to vapor pressures, P naught and P2. Which one we will write? P naught minus P2 divided by AE. AE corresponds to P naught and P1. So here we will write P naught minus P1. Okay. So this is uh, how we compare the uh, two triangles. From these two triangles we could uh, notice that T naught minus T2 by T naught minus T1 is equal to P naught minus P2 by P naught minus P1. Okay. Next step write down students. So, delta T2 divided by delta T1 is equal to delta P2 
by delta P1. Okay. So, from this expression, we can infer that delta T2 proportional to delta P2 and delta T1 proportional to delta P1. Okay. So, what is delta T2? Difference between T2 and T0. What is delta T1? Difference between T1 and T0. What is delta P2? Difference between P0 and P2. What is delta P1? Difference between P0 and P1. Okay. So, now from this in general, we can infer that delta Tf proportional to delta P. Okay. Write down students. After this one, write down. In general, in general, delta Tf proportional to delta P. Okay. So, why did we write delta Tf? Delta Tf means depression in freezing point. What is depression in freezing point? Difference between freezing point of a solvent and solution. Okay. Freezing point is, uh, depression in freezing point is nothing but Difference between freezing point of solvent and freezing point of solution, right? So, this difference in general we can show it as depression in freezing point. We denoted it with delta Tf. This is nothing but difference between vapor pressure of solvent and vapor pressure of solution. Nothing but lowering of vapor pressure denoted by delta P. Therefore, in general, delta Tf proportional to delta P. That is, write down students, that is, depression in freezing point, depression in freezing point is directly proportional to, is directly proportional to lowering of vapor pressure, lowering of vapor pressure. Full stop. Below write down students. Below. From Rolle's law, from Rolle's law, okay, write up. Delta P by P naught is equal to small w by small m into capital M by capital W. Suppose if I take, if I bring this P naught to right side, it becomes delta P is equal to small w by small m into capital M by capital W into P naught. Into P naught. Right on. Below. At the constant temperature, at constant temperature, for a particular solvent, write down students, at constant temperature, for a particular solvent, comma, vapor pressure, vapor pressure, brackets, P naught, brackets, P naught, and, and molecular weight, brackets, capital M, molecular weight, brackets, capital M, remains constant or will remain constant. Okay? Remains constant. Fine? Okay. Now we will change this expression. Delta P is equal to small w by small m, small w by small m. Now, capital M and P naught for a solvent remains constant for a particular solvent at constant temperature. Then their product also will be constant. So here write down students into constant. Product of M and P naught will be constant. Okay. As we all know, if we remove the constant, it changes as proportional to small w by small m into capital W. Okay. So, but we all know that, here write down students, but, but delta Tf proportional to delta P. But delta Tf 
proportional to delta p but we have seen delta p proportional to small w by small m into capital w so next step what will happen students delta t f proportional to small w by small m into capital w okay now if i remove the proportionality if i remove the proportionality what should i take constant very good so right now next step next step delta tf is equal to the constant taken here is kf last class what did we do we have taken kb now it is kf into small w by small m into capital w Okay, now what is this KF? This KF is called as right now students where where KF is called as KF is called as depression in depression in freezing point constant or or cryoscopic constant. cryoscopic constant or 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 molon depression constant molon depression constant okay students where kb what is kb students elevation in boiling point constant or ebullioscopic constant or molar elevation constant here it is depression in freezing point constant or cryoscopic cr by o s c o p i c cryoscopic constant or molar depression constant okay now give this i am erasing students give this equation number 1 equation 1 okay so write down below in equation 1 write down students in equation 1 in equation 1 if if small w by small m is equal to 1 and capital w is equal to 1 kg if Small W by small m is equal to one, and capital W is equal to one kg. Then, then delta T F is equal to K F. Okay. Finding this as easy, right, students? Because this is in the same way as we have learned elevation and boiling point. If you have learned that colligative property, this within uh, five uh, six minutes you will complete this answer. Okay, same. So delta T F is equal to K F. Now we can define K F from this expression. Kindly write down. I will dictate. Below, write down students. Therefore, K F is defined as K F is defined as. depression in freezing point depression in freezing point when when one mole of when one mole of non volatile solute one mole of why because w by m we have taken it as one w by m means number of moles one mole of non volatile solute One mole of non-volatile solute is dissolved in is dissolved in one kg solvent. Dissolved in one kg solvent. Put it in inverted commas, students. Okay. K F is defined as depression in freezing point when one mole of non-volatile solute is dissolved in one kg solvent. Full stop. Okay, fine. Now below, write down. If 
if weight of the solute if weight of the solute is taken in grams is taken in grams comma equation 1 becomes equation 1 becomes below write down kf into uh, delta tf is equal to kf into w into 1000 by small f into capital w when weight of the solute is taken in grams. Okay students. So the same expression changes as delta tf is equal to kf into small w into 1000 divided by small m into capital W. This can be simplified as delta tf is equal to kf into molality. Okay. Because you know molality is a number of moles of solute per kg solvent. This I have told you already in the last colligative property. Okay. Now from this expression students give this equation number 2. From this expression write down m is equal to m is equal to just cross multiplication students. Kf into small w into 1000 divided by Delta Tf into capital W. Okay. So, M is equal to Kf into small w into 1000 by Delta Tf into capital W. Okay. So, from this expression, give this as equation number 3. From equation 3, we can determine molecular weight of non-volatile solute from delta Tf. Okay? From delta Tf. Full stop. Last one sentence extra. St more students? Write down. Below. Kf is the Kf is the characteristic feature of characteristic feature of Solvents, characteristic feature of solvents and can be, and can be determined, can be determined using, using Van Hoff equation, Van Hoff equation. Van Hoff equation. First, we will write down students. Kf is equal to RTF square by 1000 LF. Kf is equal to RTF square by 1000 LF. Kindly write down students below where R gas constant, Tf uh, freezing point of solvent, freezing point of solvent. What is LF? Latent heat of fusion. Last class we have seen. LV means latent heat of vaporization. Okay. LF is latent heat of fusion. I am not going to give the definition. If you know the definition, kindly post it in the comment section. Okay. So, till here, draw a line students. Kindly. So, this is the answer for uh, determination of molecular weight of non-volatile solute from delta Tf. Okay, students. So, successfully we have completed three colligative properties. Now, what next? What next? Numericals. Very good. Okay. So, we will continue in the next class. Be ready with the, uh, uh, be ready for the next class. Okay, students. Take care, stay home, stay uh, safe, stay healthy. Bye-bye.